let me just introduce myself in case you have never seen me before and you don't know who I am. My name is Monique Rebel. I am an artist. <clears throat> I have been an artist for many, many years. Painter. I've done some other stuff as well, but mainly painting. And I also wrote a book titled Transcendence Calling, The Power of Kundalini Rising and Spiritual Enlightenment. I wrote this book because some years ago, it's already many years ago, I had an experience that was spontaneous and I didn't know anything about it when it was happening. Um, and that experience completely changed my life. At the time when it was about to happen, I was going to commit suicide. I was depressed for many months. I was struggling and eventually the only thing that seemed right was to end my life. And as you can see, I didn't end it, but it actually took me, that experience took me to a completely different side of life for the last almost 30 years. I have been living a really happy, successful life. I've been doing great because I'm happy. And that's not happiness that's uh, superficial because of whatever is going on that day or, or that month or, or whenever, not because of, uh, not because of the external circumstances, but because of something that I feel deep inside. And I know very well that the experience I had is something that each of us can have. And some of us are very close to it. Some of us know it. Some of us don't know it. Um, today, we're going to talk about um, smartness versus wisdom. Because, obviously, these days, as everyone knows, we are going through so much confusion about what's going on, climate and politics and economy and uh, situations all over the world that are all over the globe that are really alarming in many ways. And it's, uh, these are more anxious times for us right now. And I wanted to present to you something that I was I had a chance to discover during my experience. My experience is called Kundalini Rising, and in some instances, like some of us have that experience, and sometimes it just happens not all the way up, and sometimes, because all the way, it's all the way to, to the point where our Kundalini, which is consciousness, this is what I see as consciousness, that's how I teach that Kundalini is an individual unit of consciousness. And as some of us, some of you may know, uh, it's resting at the bottom of the spine. Sometimes it can uh, awaken and move up. Usually that's accompanied by different kind of uh, sensations that we experience, different states of our being, and sometimes it's uh, frightening, sometimes it's um, exciting. So it all depends. There are so many different ways that uh, this process can happen. For me, it happened, uh, as I said, spontaneously. And it lasted only about half an hour, and my consciousness moved all the way through the crown chakra. It visited these places, which 
are called chakras, energies of vortex, uh, vortexes of energy, but I call them the gates to the dimensions of perception. So once that experience happened to me, I was able to distinguish different stages. As I said, I didn't know anything about the experience at the time. And the uh, matter of Kundalini rising and spiritual enlightenment was just pretty much non-existent to me at that point. All I, I learned everything from that experience. And I also learned that I practiced subconsciously for many years, and that's why it happened. So, although, as they say, this thing, it can happen to someone, and it's not known why, I am uh, explaining how we are all, most of us are practicing subconsciously somewhat, and we can all practice consciously in order to get to a much better state of being. So, these vortexes of energy that are chakras, as some of you may know very well, they all are um, of certain kind. They're all, each of them has a, a, a different energy. Um, when we talk about uh, them from the viewpoint from the viewpoint of uh, chakras, uh, chakras usually are uh, the way the chakras are explained is that they are um, affecting certain parts of the body or emotions or sexuality or or mind or thoughts or heart love and and so on and my explanation is similar but it's actually seen from a different viewpoint when we look at this picture this is a viewpoint of the sixth chakra sixth chakra is uh, taking us into the world of vision and intuition. So in visions over, the, over thousands of years, especially in ancient India and overall, it's, it's Indian culture, Indian tradition that, that knows about the subtle body system and Kundalini, which is also a Sanskrit word and meaning coiled up. Um, that system is known uh, as um, being uh, seen from the sixth chakra viewpoint, from the third eye viewpoint. Because this experience happened to me uh, when I was on my own, not knowing ever, anything about it, I experienced uh, my consciousness moving through dimensions of perception. So let's go quickly over the dimensions and get to the point of this of discussion of our topic of discussion, the uh, smartness versus wisdom. I guess you already know. Some of you already know what I'm talking about. But let's go start from the beginning. The first dimension is material. So that includes our bodies and everything that we see. It's called, I call it dimension, but, um, and, and the dimensions that we know uh, from you know, as long as men have been able to talk about that, we, we know about length, width, and depth. I call those length, width, and depth sub-dimensions. And everything that's material reality, including cosmos and whatever we see under a microscope, is uh, the material world. So we are, our bodies are part of the material world. The second uh, dimension is emotional. Although um, second chakra is considered uh, sometimes to be, or very often to be emotional, sexual, and creative, I don't uh, use that uh, I, use, I, I don't use that description for, for the second dimension. 
I use only emotional and the consciousness itself, Kundalini, becomes survival, sexual and creative as soon as it creates the body and the subtle body. Subtle body which is Kundalini and chakras. And there is more elements to it, but we don't really need for our purpose to talk too much in details about that. Because we're going now to the third chakra that opens us up to the third dimension. And here we have will and mind. These are all the thoughts that we have. And this is what we want to do with those thoughts. These are our um, decisions, our will that makes us think in a certain way and maybe because of our emotions we're influenced to make decisions accordingly to what we want, accordingly to our emotional state is telling us and accordingly to what we can figure out. So that third, that third chakra is, uh, is opening us up to this huge world of uh, mental structures, thoughts that are not necessarily just ours, but the dimension is everywhere, like all the dimensions are always there. So the dimension of thoughts and will, decision, is always there. Let's go quickly over the, uh, the upper chakras, the heart, uh, very important. Without it, we really wouldn't do well at all. Um, it's a dimension of eternal, universal love that we experience in personal way and sometimes we can also open up enough to experience it in a more universal way as God's love. The fifth one, the throat, the throat chakra opens us up to the fifth dimension, an incredible magical world of connection and exchange of energy in many different ways. A lot through sound but also through other means like uh, telepathy or channeling. We can channel beings as you know, we can be psychic and uh, experience getting information about stuff that other people may not know and we experience it because we have that throat chakra open and the fifth dimension is open to us with it's magic, performance, music, dance, it's, it's, can put us in a trance, it can make, make us happy because of the way the harmonies sound, but also we can experience a connection with any kind of being, spirit or, or a life person, or, uh, or, uh, Creatures from other galaxies and different times. Um, Akashic records are there. So a lot is there in that fifth dimension. The sixth dimension is also quite incredible. That's already something that has um, certain systems in there. Systems like uh, psychic sciences, astrology, numerology, I Ching, tarot cards, um, and the systems of divination, sacred geometry, but also importantly, sacred symbols, archetypes, and religions, and gods and deities. All that is in that dimension. That's very rich, has many layers of. Um, intuition and vision. So some of us are intuitively able to get into that dimension and receive information. For some of us it's almost impossible, but all of us have that subtle body system. So 
we all can work on developing the chakras and that's what I'm also teaching helping to cultivate the upper chakras because they're very important the seventh chakra is spiritual enlightenment depends on the opening of the seventh chakra and the reason why not that many people have experienced full kundalini rising is because the upper chakras are not not open not developed enough and the lower chakras are congested and so charged with energy that kundalini cannot go through even if it's aroused because it's not a big deal to actually arouse kundalini but it's a big deal to let it go through all of the chakras. So the seventh one opens um, in case when we have the mind, that, that special mind of witnessing and discerning um, developed enough that we can conduct the process of self-inquiry. I teach about self-inquiry, it's not possible to teach this process right now, but let's go back to talk to our discussion about what actually is happening with us this, this, these days. What has been happening to humans for thousands of years? Um, why people fight, why people don't agree, why there are so many viewpoints and why it's so hard to have relationships when people are happy together, why, why there is so much conflict in the world and so much misunderstanding. Um, our civilization, as it is, it's based on the first three dimensions. These three chakras, as I said, are open and especially the second and third are full of um, energy that uh, stops the possibility of Kundalini going moving up and this is how the world has been for for thousands of years there are other civilizations like for example egyptian or old indian and some other ancient civilizations that i don't even know about but i know that the issues of upper chakras were addressed much better because the magic of being was kind of more present in those times. Right now, everything is so much based on the third chakra, the logic trying to put logic in everything and as we uh, observe the development of technology the development of uh, science in some ways not in every way but in those ways that there is so much of new technology artificial intelligence of course talking about internet and the possibilities that came with it and the way it's changing the way we do things the way we understand things and it's quickly changing the way the whole world operates this is where we need to understand better that we are not just those three dimensions we are not just material, emotional, and mental. 
as we know, religions have been it been very important and spirituality very important, but usually like all of the all of the upper chakras are sometimes considered spiritual. The sacredness starts with the opening of the fourth chakra, and then it keeps on staying there throughout uh, the uh, exploration of the upper of the upper dimensions. Um, so that's my point: is that that smartness that we experience, that smartness that we think, that smart as smart as we think that we are because of technology, because how far uh, we have gone in uh, creating uh, a, very, uh, a very advanced civilization. At the same time, we are completely missing the point here. There is no understanding of the upper dimensions and the function of upper dimensions. But we know from, yes, old India and all that that comes to us from that part of the world, Eastern civilizations that talk about focusing the mind, meditating, doing yoga. Yes, there are ways to make us develop from that limited being that's constantly focusing on the material reality, constantly worried about our emotions, constantly worried about our physical well-being, being anxious and, and uh, not knowing what to do is often because we don't know that we have so much more to gain from having those upper chakras open. So, as I was already describing the um, matter of cultivating the upper chakras, when we come to the seventh chakra that opens us up to that dimension where we are connected with all there is, with the ultimate consciousness. There is only one consciousness. That's the thing, there is only one. And we all belong to it, and, and the more conscious we are of the dimensions of perception and the fact that we are one with it, the easier it is to live, the happier our lives are, and more beneficial we are for the rest of the world. So it's very important to cultivate the upper chakras and to understand that the smartness, the knowledge that we gain from external world is not all there is for us. That the way we have been understanding how the world works and how we are still uh, looking into the intricate systems that are in the brain, that are in uh, cosmos, that are in our physical reality, there are ways to reach the wisdom that's always there, the deep, deep spiritual wisdom that's possible to be reached because of developing the seventh chakra. We don't learn about it in school, but we all can do it.
we all can develop the seventh chakra. We all, we all can develop it, each of us can develop it to the point when it will be able to open. It's just a matter of practice. So those deep spiritual truths, we know about them from the greatest spiritual teachers. And we can always reach for those, for those truths and when we read them, suddenly when we, when we get in contact with them, when we understand the words of great spiritual teachers, something happens. We become more calm. We, we suddenly feel better. And that's the difference between this world, the first three dimensions, led by the mind, the, the, the illusion of being wise, the smart mind that thinks that if we have uh, more technology, we're going to be happier. You know, it's not the case. We're going to be more happy and our world, our planet, will do much better if we are going to cultivate and develop all the upper chakras, train the lower ones, and I teach that, that's very important because we all need to train the second and the third for sure, the first one as well, but it's not as hard as working with the second and third, but we all need to work on cultivating that other mind, that mind that just witnesses, the mind that observes and discerns. So this mind, the logic, the knowledge that we have from the external world, all that that makes us think that we are so smart, that's something that identifies. It's an, an identifying process. This mind discerns. And this is where the wisdom is. It's not the wisdom just about those three dimensions, because chakras have hierarchy. And from this dimension of the mind and will, we can only see down. So we can see maybe the mind itself, if we train our mind to actually observe and uh, figure out what we're thinking. It's a very important uh, element of practice. I call it know thyself. Um, it's one of the uh, one of the uh, uh, practices that I teach. Um, if we are able to see our emotions, understand what we're feeling, that's also something not everybody actually understands. Not everybody knows what they're feeling. They're just upset, but they don't even know where that upset is coming from. Well, something happened. But I teach separating the chakras and looking at each of them as its own world, because that's what they are. Each of the dimension operates on a different principle and we deal with it in a different way. So from here we can see only down. From here, from love, from the universal eternal love, we can see down how so many of us feel unhappy because we think that we are not loved. Well, Everyone is loved deeply. 
It's just a matter of tapping into that. Okay. I teach that as well. So from here, we can see down also, we can see down from here, and we can see down from here. But from here, we cannot see up. So mind is limited not only by the fact that it's operating just with logic and linear thinking, but just by the fact that it is um, it seems like it's all that we know, right? And that's how we work, that's how we are. But actually, this mind can be all cleared up. That chakra can be all cleared up. If Kundalini awakens and can go through it, it will clear up all of our thoughts, all of our mental concepts, all of our mental systems that were probably dragging us down and making us stuck. All that can be cleared up. The same with the second chakra, it can be all cleared up. We are magical beings. Our Kundalini is the spirit. The spirit can do anything it wants. And as a full being with all of the with all of the chakras open and developed, we can create a much better world for ourselves and for the rest of the world, the rest of everything. And the truth is that each of us have that capacity, each of us can do it. And once we develop the upper chakras, once we allow Kundalini to move up, because it will do it on its own, then that deep wisdom is ours. that deep, mystical, sacred wisdom is ours. All that is not to say that we should not bother with this part. It's very important to be able to deal with our emotions, deal with our mind, work on our body so they're healthy, so, so they're function, functioning as they should be, so they give us as much pleasure and good life as they can. And the same is with emotions and the same is with the mind, because mind can think very, very well. We can find solutions for problems if we're not overwhelmed by our emotions, by especially by negative emotions. So the mind that we are using on daily basis, it's not enough. And it's not all there is. That we are understanding the world according to this this whole bunch of mental systems, structures, thoughts, what we've learned in school, what we learn from our parents, what we learn in our town, what we learn now from online, we learn whatever and everything and every everybody and, and everything. We just we just learn too much and mind is all over our minds are all over the place. We can't focus very well and that's a big problem because actually in order to have the mind cleared up from all those lingering mental systems that we carry with us from the time we're born or maybe even from past lifetimes in order to clear that up we have to train the mind to focus first focus to the point of being able to just have one thought once we have that one thought, we have to learn to surrender that thought 
I use that word surrender. Some people use uh, maybe more something like um, something like uh, humility or acceptance. Um, that also works, but I learned that surrendering that one thought allows our magical energy to move up and clear the second and the third chakra. Actually, by the time we do the exercise, the practice on emotions, our Kundalini is already able to move up. And then by the time we work on our on our uh, third chakra on our mind, uh, we are uh, releasing all of the thoughts we've ever had. They come to the present time and they vanish in transcendence. Here is a question from Aftar. Can the higher wisdom still help us solve problems in daily life? The issues people usually use the third chakra, the mind, to solve. Um, well, it's a very interesting question because um, we do, if we do have that wisdom, it definitely uh, makes, it definitely gives us answers much faster than if we would get them through proceeding with, with uh, the mental process. So um, I would say yes, uh, and knowing how, uh, how uh, conversations with spiritual teachers go, you know, someone comes with their small personal issues and the teacher will answer from here, right? So it may make us feel better right away if we get that answer from here and if we ourselves are able to develop which we are but if we do develop our uh, our seventh chakra we'll be able to go over to to not to get bothered as much with our small problems and actually I'm so glad you asked that question because here is where the magic of our being is. We think that we have to figure everything out. We think that we have to know this and know that and know how things are going to go and all. But the truth is, as I already mentioned in some of my previous sessions, but I'll go back to it in the future ones, if we are here with consciousness, we know that everything we go through has already been solved. It's already done. We are chasing our shadows, basically, by trying to get things done and worrying about everything. Right? So, um, that our lives are can be visible to us from the sixth the chakra, when we open to the sixth dimension, our lives are already coded there. But we are living through it as material beings, as emotional beings, as, uh, as beings who are experiencing uh, the lifetime. It's called samsara. It's the cycle of life and death. We're experiencing it for a reason. And it's not always because uh, the reason is that um, we want to be rich or we want to have a nice family or because whatever, we want to have a successful career or something. The reasons are deeper. So it's okay to do, do the life because if we have all these upper ones developed, and if we can see how life is magical as is, there is only happiness that 
is we are exuding and everything happens fine. Everything turns out okay. Now, it is samsara, okay? It is the third, uh, it is uh, the third chakra, it is the second chakra, it is the first chakra. These dimensions, if we totally are lost in them, they will always give us trouble. And that's the way it happens. It's kind of samsara is like the Murphy's Law, you know, whatever can go wrong, it will go wrong. So we need to develop the upper chakras so we can look at this this thing from a little distance, right? So yes, after there are many ways we can we can use the benefit of the upper chakras and the, especially the seventh one open in order to create much easier life for ourselves. But you know, life is always creating the um, the way our soul designs. Is so we do have challenges, and once we understand that, we can much easier accept and deal with those challenges. Be inspired. This chakra, when open, gives us inspiration. And without inspiration, we won't go get very far. So I'm inviting you to take a free session. If you would like to learn more, um, what I can offer you, if you would like to get results in uh, uh, training the lower chakras to be able to focus better, think better, and be more uh, kind of in charge of your life, if you would like to uh, stop being bothered by certain emotions. So many of us, I mean, emotional life is very rich for us. And it doesn't matter what kind of spiritual stage you're, you're at, we always go through emotions. We always, in, no matter who we are, we do feel good, we feel bad, we feel scared, we feel, we feel enthusiastic, we feel sad. It happens all the time. As long as we are here living this, this life, we're going to experience ups and downs. But there are ways of checking ourselves and dealing with those emotions. And actually, if we practice uh, for a little longer time, it depends on the person. We can uh, we can uh, really take care of all negative emotions very quickly. Uh, the point is that sometimes we don't want to do that. We want to live through. We want to live through this this whole thing with whatever is going on in the world and whatever our personal lives are, are giving us and all the troubles, we kind of want them. And there, is, there are reasons for it. Um, it's, we can find those reasons up here. And when we, when, if you go through my whole program, we'll get to each dimension, how to, uh, how to practice to develop them, how to, uh, how to practice to train the lower ones. It was my pleasure to share with you my insights and share with you what I can offer to you. And I hope to talk to you very soon. Okay, thank you guys.